between the North End Waterfront Residents Association, NUBRA, of which I'm president, Jim Salini, and New NIF, which is the North End Waterfront Neighborhood Council, of which Stephen Pasquantilli is president. NUBRA has their meetings in this Bizarro Center on the second Thursday of each month at 7 o'clock, and NUBRA has theirs on the second Monday of each month at 7 o'clock. So if you enjoy this presentation, uh, we have other presentations like this, and we both vote on uh, zoning and licensing issues. <laughs> so if you miss one meeting, maybe come to the other. So tonight we're going to present the uh, Boston Garden Project, uh, which uh, might have taken up a great deal of our meetings. So we uh, did the joint project, and we'll be here from 7 to 9. There'll be plenty of time to ask questions and make comments after the uh, presentation. And uh, if you want to make any, I will just ask you to raise your hands and we'll identify you. Okay, uh, we have um, the, the developers who are from Delaware North and Boston Properties. Uh, our lead spokesman is Harry Collins, who worked many years for the BRA uh, on the city side, and now he's on the construction and developer side. Um, Harry? Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing us to present tonight. Uh, as we said, I'm Harry Collins. I'm working with uh, Joint Partnership, which is Delaware North and uh, Boston Properties. Uh, we filed a letter of intent uh, May 15th, uh, and uh, just September 5th, we filed an expanded p and uh, We've been meeting with uh, many neighborhood uh, groups in the West End. And uh, we've met with uh, most of the public officials uh, to present the project. Uh, we, uh, we expect that um, we'll be uh, uh, presenting the project to the BRA board sometime in November. Uh, and uh, we have extended the comment period. We've been meeting with the IAG. Uh, we met with the IAG before we filed anything. And then we met with them after we filed the intent. And we had a meeting last week with the IAG. Once Excuse the, me, sir. Could you please uh, not use uh, initials IAG? Okay. For, uh, for okay. And, and could you also speak a little louder? A little okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we met with the Impact Advisory Group, uh, and um, that's made up of community groups in the area. As I say, we met with them early on. Met with them before we filed and uh, met uh, again once we filed the uh, uh, expanded PNF, which is project notification. It's an expanded form where we've done all the other work, we've done all of the consulting, had all the consultants do the traffic studies, the wind studies, the shadow studies, all in the package before they were presented to the BRA. So with that, I think we'll just start with the presentation and uh, we'll introduce uh, Kevin Sheehan and Chris Maher uh, to continue the presentation. Karen, do you think that you, there's a question about when the common period is going to end? You said you extended it? Yeah, it, it was a 30-day common period from uh, September 5th. We've extended it 45 days. I'm sorry. I'll just check. Okay. I'm John Fitzgerald with the Boston Redevelopment Authority, and I'm the project manager taking this through the community process. Uh, it was extended until the 24th of October, so the end of the uh, you have 15 days from the, the prior 30 day comment period. Okay, so October 24th is the end of the comment period. Right. And the MEPA process, where is it at? And is there a deadline for that as well? Uh, or will that come up later in the It will. It will come up. Okay. Good evening. My name's Chris Mahar. I work for Delaware North Companies. Nobody's ever accused me of speaking too soft. <laughs> so I don't think you'll have a hard time hearing my big mouth. But uh, I just wanted to say thank you for asking us to present tonight. We feel like we've got a terrific project here to present, and there's been a lot going on in the community with a, with a lot of different, uh, a lot of different. Uh, activity with projects, but uh, Delaware North Companies, which owns the uh, TD Garden, 
and we own the Boston Bruins, as you probably know. You know, we've owned those we've owned those assets since 1975, and we were designated the developer for this site, which included the garden and the garden site in 1988 by the Boston Redevelopment Authority. Through those years, <coughs> excuse me, through those years, we've uh, obviously built the new arena, which opened in '95. We took down the old garden in, in uh, 1999, and <laughs> subsequently we took a residential project through the process. Avalon Bay, uh, we hit the downturn. Avalon Bay has purchased that project from us, and we'll start construction next year. And uh, you know, we last year we acquired through long-term lease the parking garage down below the MBTA parking lot. We've also participated with the MBTA in expanding the North Station and putting structural supports in the Green Line Tunnel to support air rights loads above. And through all of this, it really is the making of the culmination is what you're about to see tonight. And several years ago, I guess over three years ago, we partnered with Boston Properties to start developing a plan or bringing this, bringing this site to its, to its fruition as far as development goes. So we feel we've got one of the best partners development-wise in the country to, uh, to partner with on this. And I might also add that you know we're property owners. We've been here, like I said, since 1975. Boston Properties owns several large projects in the city of Boston, and we've been long-term, long-vision type of ownership. So I think that makes a little bit of difference in the mindset as we as we go forward with that. Uh, with that, I'll introduce Kevin Sheehan from Boston Properties. Thanks, Chris. Uh, as Chris said, I'm Kevin Sheehan from Boston Properties. I'm the project manager working with with Chris and uh, his team on this on this project. Uh, Boston Properties is is a um, real estate um, in, uh, investment company, uh, developer, and owner, and operator um, based in Boston. Uh, some of our other properties in the city include uh, the Prudential Center in the Back Bay and a, um, a newer development uh, that uh, we built near South Station called Atlantic Wharf. Um, and uh, I just want to echo some of what Chris said, which is that we, we really have a long-term uh, ownership philosophy very similar to um, the Delaware North Companies. Uh, uh, Boston Properties has, has been around Boston about, about the same period of time, about, about 40 years. And um, you know we're, we're very excited to be involved with Delaware North um, on the garden site, uh, the site of the old Boston Garden. We feel that um, this, this is a great site in, in, in the city of Boston, and it's, it's a very special place uh, because of the presence of, of the Garden and the, the two uh, great sports teams that we have there, the Bruins and the Celtics, and, and all the other events that happen there, not, not just sports. Um, and uh, as well, there's the, uh, the North Station, a major commuting hub, so it's really an entrance point to the to the city for, for many people from um, the suburbs and, and the region, and an important part of our, our whole transportation uh, network. And it, it also um, is really at, um, in the heart of a, of a, um, a great and uh, growing community um, that uh, really has experienced um, some very positive development over the uh, last few years which have all been made possible by a lot of the long-term planning and investments that have been that uh, Chris's company and the city and the state have been involved in uh, you know just to mention a few things that, that Chris already did uh, if we didn't already say it the big dig um, you know was, was obviously a huge impact on, on this area um, near the site, um, as well as some of the other um, investments in the in the um, uh, new green line uh, and uh, some of the investments that Delaware North was involved in the improvements to North Station, um, and so we're seeing some of those effects from other uh, some of the other developments in the neighborhood, and um, we 
we see this as really all the factors being aligned to allow uh, the development of this project to go forward. As Chris mentioned, if the planning for this really started in the, in the 80s and um, we are um, really executing a plan that is very similar to some of the, the original ideas um, that were um, thought of when, when the new Boston Garden was planned and, and developed. So uh, our schedule, uh, Harry mentioned some of the um, milestones. We are in the permitting process now. We're in the, in the Article 80 uh, process, which is, a, which is the large project review process with the Boston Redevelopment Authority. Um, we are doing a parallel process. Somebody asked about MEPA, and uh, make sure I get this right, the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act, I think, is the, just make sure we get, get the uh, acronyms correct. But that is a state uh, review process, and, the, and we are subject to that process as well. We, we have filed an environmental notification form, um, and our next filing uh, is an EIR, Environmental Impact Report. And um, we will, uh, that, that will uh, contain a lot of the same information that's in the project notification form and some uh, additional study information as well. We are planning to file that uh, before the end of this month. And that, that we will continue to go through both processes uh, in parallel. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, present this project to you here tonight, but. Um, uh, it's, again, part of this larger permitting process uh, that we'll continue to go through. We talked about um, our uh, plan to be at the, um, at the BRA for sometime in November, and uh, we anticipate uh, we're successful in the permitting process that we will uh, be under construction with the first phase of the project next year. And uh, I'm going to turn this over to uh, David Manfredi in a moment to describe the project. He'll um, il illustrate the whole thing, but uh, I just want to give you a, a quick description of the first phase, which is uh, a, a, involves a podium building that includes retail and some office uses, as well as a, a hotel building and parking below. And uh, there are future phases of the project that would include a residential building and uh, an office tower. But this, this first phase of the project, is, and David will describe it in a moment, we see as, as very important. It's, the, it's the, really the base of the um, development on the street. And um, we are really excited about um, the ability to execute this. We've um, been very focused on sort of the look and feel, which, which you'll see in a moment. And also, what are the right uh, uses to be in this uh, this first phase. And so we've uh, become very focused on um, the possibility of doing a supermarket um, in this first phase. We have received a lot of community feedback about the desire to have a, a supermarket. And, um, you know, we think, we agree that would be a great use for the project. So we've pursued that um, very hard and, and made some very good progress on the, um, the potential tenancy. Uh, a few of the other uh, potential retail tenants I want to mention are um, a uh, cinema. So we've, we've been talking to a particular uh, cinema operator about uh, locating a uh, movie theater there. And um, also uh, other uh, entertainment uses such as uh, potentially a bowling alley and, and uh, restaurants. So we'd really like to build on what what um, the Boston Garden uh, or the TD Garden represents um, with this development, which is a, a sports and, and um, entertainment a spe special place, as I talked about. Um, also, uh, acknowledging that this is a major commuter hub with, with 50,000 people coming in and out every day, so we think that um, we can, we can uh, cater to commuters with some more quick service retail, but also recognizing that you know, none of this retail can, can, is going to be able to survive without a strong uh, neighborhood base. So that's where the supermarket comes in and some other convenience uh, retail possibilities, such as a, a drugstore, a bank, bank branch. So um, I, I just wanted to give you a, a sense of some of the uh, tenants that we're talking to about this first phase and, and what our schedule is. Uh, we're 
really excited about this project. We think it brings a lot of benefits, um, not just the supermarket, also, as you'll see in the presentation, a, a, a new front door um, to the complex on, um, on Causeway Street that would really announce um, North Station and the, and the arena um, and the whole development and give the whole thing a front door so we don't all walk around the side of, side of the building anymore. Um, and, uh, and also, just give us a chance to infill this parking lot on, on Causeway Street that we've been living with for, for many years and really complete that street and, and um, connect it with the, with the fabric of the neighborhood. So um, I'm going to turn it over to David and he, he's going to uh, walk through the presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to try to position myself. I don't block any views. I might be in trouble with you. I'm David Manfredi from Elvis Manfredi Architects. Here to understand on this project, so please feel free. I'm going to go back to go back into history a little bit because that's where we started our study of the site. And first of all, um, you recognize this site as an incredibly important portal into the city. Uh, as Kevin said, there's 50,000 commuters a day who come in through the West Station. And when you look at the, the historic layout of the city, you have these two incredible portals, South Station and North Station, they are the transit hubs, uh, and they're unconnected below grade, as we all know, uh, but now they're connected above grade uh, by the Greenway. And so they represent, they're symbolically important, they're physically important um, as well. If you look at the history, and you go back and start uh, in 1815 when Mill Pond was filled, and you can see where the site is relative to the whole Boston Peninsula. Uh, you can see that um, Mill Pond was, was filled, and what's Canal Street today was a canal, and uh, the canal connected the river to the harbor, and the canal was truly the main street uh, of this entire neighborhood. And as we move along, um, you can, again, the, um, taking it through its different parts, along came the North Union Station, and if you look at the photographs of North Union Station, this was an incredibly important civic building in the city. Uh, it was treated as a, as a kind of portal uh, with a real civic sort of print presence about it. Again, it was at the head of, uh, of Canal Street, uh, right in the center of the Bullfinch Triangle. And the Bullfinch Triangle is important for a number of reasons, designed and laid out by Charles Bullfinch, uh, but also um, a very regular grid in a city that doesn't have a lot of regular grids. Uh, and, and a very fine grain grid, meaning that uh, it's very pedestrian friendly. Uh, it is more about pedestrians uh, in its original layout than it is about the automobile. And then along came, 1901 came um, the, the uh, elevated green line, uh, orange line, 1912 the green line, and what the Green Line and Orange Line did was to extend public transit, but it submerged the streets in the shadow and really changed the character uh, of those streets quite dramatically. And then 1947, the original Boston Garden opens, um, and uh, most of us remember the original, the original garden and, and have great memories of, of uh, events that went on there. And then in the 50s came uh, the, the uh, elevated highway, and the elevated highway you know, this big black arrow, uh, it's black for a reason. Uh, <laughs> it cast shadows, it cut through the, through the center of the, the whole triangle. It really changed the character of this entire place. Uh, and as, as Chris said, um, in, in 74, the Orange Line was relocated, Fleet Center opened in 95, and the Old Garden was demolished. But the really 
um, turning point was um, is the Greenwood, the relocation of, of 93 below grade, which not only made that north-south connection, but created the possibility to restore the, uh, the Bulkers Triangle uh, infill where that, that big star ran through the city and really bring back the pedestrian character of this entire district. Now, the site, our site, is not in the triangle, uh, but it's an important, a very important edge to the triangle. So in terms of its kind of civic obligation, uh, it is important in, in uh, as an adjacency to the, the Vulcan's Triangle. It's important as portal into the city. And what we're going to suggest is it's also important as, as connection, uh, connecting the Greenway, Haymarket, um, to North Station. And so um, when we look at the site, we think about those connections. And we think about Canal Street as the kind of main street of the Bullfinch Triangle, and how that line from Haymarket to North Station uh, divides this site, what is that surface parking lot today, into two separate sites, actually two blocks. And that's important. We think it's important. Uh, we we want to make this whole site as pedestrian friendly as we possibly can and as active on its ground plane as we possibly can. And so rather than propose a single building, uh, we've divided this up into two sites, two blocks. Um, and we look at all of the pedestrian connections. And as, as Kevin mentioned, the way North Station works today um, is really kind of odd because it was uh, really a kind of temporary fix. The notion that you come out of the North Station or out of the T Garden and go out kind of the side doors, uh, east and west. Uh, the opportunity here is really to create a new front door uh, so that that pedestrian traffic that's coming out of North Station comes out between these two new blocks and really there is direct connection to the Greenway, the Haymarket, the Government Center, to the Financial District. There'll always be these connections, uh, and as you know, with the uh, the Avalon Project, the connection out the west side through the Avalon Project across into the west end uh, is being enhanced. Uh, and uh, 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 you also know Causeway Street uh, will be re reconfigured, rebuilt uh, in terms of its kind of public realm improvements. Uh, that all gets better. Uh, and, but the real, the real change here is the opportunity to make a new front door. We looked at vehicular circulation, and um, as many of you probably know, Delaware North has been involved in the study of all of the vehicular circulation in the Bulkins Triangle for years. Uh, and the restoration of these pier, pier one-way streets has really um, brought the, uh, this whole area back into its original kind of alignment. So now I'm going to move to three dimensions. Um, so this is the site where it says parking, the Queen Garden, and the and North Station and Causeway Street, you know, the O'Neill building. Uh, and today, those, the, the entrances are on the east side and the west side of, of <coughs> North Station. But what that means is that there's a lot of stuff that went underground uh, when uh, the Green Line and the Orange Line were relocated. And that's important for a couple of reasons. Uh, the site actually is not just this rectangle. The site comes all the way over, basically, to the bulkhead of the of the O'Neill Tunnel. And uh, within this end of the site, there is the orange line uh, tunnel box below grade, and there's a green line tunnel box below grade. And the reason I mention that is they're kind of physical constraints, as, as you all know, as buildings have been proposed on top of the green line. Some of those buildings hasn't, haven't happened uh, because of the constraints of building on top of the tunnel. We've got a couple of tunnels below grade. We can build on top of them. Uh, but it does affect how we locate those buildings. Uh, and we've got only a certain dimension that we can actually build buildings that have where those elevator cores can go. And that's kind of shaped part of this development. And I can fill that in uh, with a little bit more detail as we show you the, the actual proposal. And so we evolved three design principles, kind of urban planning principles about what we thought should happen on these blocks or blocks. Um, beginning with this Canal Street axis, the kind of restoration of Canal Street, the main street of the Bullfinch Triangle, 
Um, that suggests an alignment that connects from Haymarket through Canal to North Station and the development of two blocks with an important kind of civic portal between them. The second principle was in creating these blocks, we should try to activate as much edge as we can. What I mean by that is on the ground plane, uh, we have the opportunity to create retail storefronts, restaurants, entrance to grocery store, entrance to cinema, uh, that will activate all of these edges. And it's not just the causeway edge, but the edge into the into North Station. Even the edge uh, in along that passageway between this site and the O'Neill building uh, and really create a very pedestrian friendly zone, a place that has activity, uh, that draws people uh, and, and keeps them there, that engages pedestrians. And then finally, and this is, um, this is about urban design, it may be a little esoteric, but we think it's important that North Station is the edge of the city, and this site is at the edge of the city. When you go beyond this site, um, you go beyond the river, you go into the suburbs. You're really at the end of the city, and you're at the end of the, the grid of the city, the kind of 90 degree grid of the city. And so that's inspired how we think about the taller parts of the proposal, meaning that they don't just align with the street. Um, in fact, they signal the fact that you are kind of at the edge of the city. And they signal that from, from the north as you're approaching the city. They also signal that uh, as, a, as if you are a pedestrian on, a, on the street surrounding the site. And so I'm going to take you through the, the project floor by floor, um, and then kind of around the project in a series of uh, computer model views. Um, first, let's start the overall site plan. This is Causeway Street. Uh, the, the beginning of the O'Neill Tunnel and, and um, Point Park, the O'Neill Building. And this is the edge of North Station. And today, <clears throat> if you come and go from North Station, you come and go left, you come along this sidewalk, and you come out and come through this passageway, and this is all surface park. What we're proposing is to create these two blocks. We call it the West Block and the East Block. And everything that's in brown is some kind of retail or restaurant, kind of uses of, of public accommodation is what um, um, the Commonwealth calls them. Uh, and so these are front doors on the street. And the green is entrances to lobbies of buildings above. So this is entrance to residential building. Um, there's an entrance here on Causeway. There's also an entrance off of this passageway. This is the entrance to the hotel building. And everything else that's in brown is that was retail and restaurant. Same thing on the east block. There's an entrance to an office building above, but those entrances are kept very small, uh, so they don't dominate the streetscape. What we really want is multiple users, multiple storefronts um, that create the kind of diversity you see in other parts of, uh, of the city. Uh, and we're calling this passageway between uh, Champions Row. And so what Champions Row does is it really creates a front door to North Station. Uh, it also creates a front door to um, the Heaty Garden, so that the garden guest comes in and goes up escalators into the garden. North Station guest is coming through onto the platform and onto the train. There's also a connection below grade between the green line, orange line, and North Station, so that you'll be able to come off of the train, come through the lower level of the building, or go down to the lower level, get on the orange line and the green line, and then go outdoors in the messy winter months. Um, so if I start below grade, again, this is the existing building right here. And as uh, Chris mentioned, uh, Delaware North now controls uh, that parking. And what we're showing here is that this is the MBTA passageway to the orange and green line platform. So you'll be able to come off the orange and green line, come across this gray area, and come up and into North Station. Uh, you'll also be able to come out of parking and get onto those transit lines. Uh, and on this lower level, we'll also have, this is the grocery store, and I'll show you in a moment. Its entrance is above grade, is on, at grade, on Champions Road, down escalators, and into this big footprint. I should have mentioned, I'm going to go back and mention it now, because the grocery store always comes with trucks. 
um, and service. And then what I should have mentioned was there's loading docks on both sides. There's loading docks here on the west side, completely enclosed in the building. Um, so there's access to those loading docks off the causeway. These loading docks serve grocery stores, serve all of that retail. There's also loading docks here off that existing Legends Way, which goes to the, the service area behind the TD Garden. Uh, and that service is the east side. So the grocery store is serviced from above, meaning the merchandise comes in and the trash goes out, and that's the footprint of the grocery store, with its back of house and front of house. And then there's also additional retail space. Kevin mentioned pharmacy possibility. That's a nice uh, location for pharmacy. Again, its front door up on the street and then down to that level. David, order. can you tell us how many square feet that would be for the supermarket? The total grocery as drawn here, here is about 45,000 square feet. Big grocery. Super. Now, going up the grade, just at a little bigger scale, everything that I mentioned, those loading docks kind of hidden in the middle of the block, active edges all the way around, front doors to office, hotel, residential, and then retail that has its presence on the street, retail that has its presence on the street, but its real space above. The grocery store is entered off of, this is all open to the sky, so as a guest of the grocery store, you'll come into Champions Row, go down these escalators, and down into that store. If any of you know the, there's a, a great grocery store at, um, Columbus Circle in New York. It has the same sort of relationship. You come in off the street, you're down escalators, and the whole grocery store is in front of you. Up on the second level, again, is retail. Uh, bigger retail footprints. These escalators come off the street into these bigger footprints. Um, and these could be restaurant tenants. These could be entertainment type, type tenants. These could be traditional, more traditional kind of retail tenants. If you're coming to TD Garden, hockey, basketball, the circus, Disney and Ice. Um, you come up these escalators and you enter into um, the, the existing concourse of the garden. And then up on the third floor is the cinema um, that Kevin mentioned. So its entry would be at this kind of southwest corner. You go up escalators and this one full floor, high floor, um, so that you can do um, stadium class seating is um, on this floor. And you can see what we're showing here is eight screens. This is a very um, schematic kind of layout. There'll be a lot of evolution around that. Um, but with a kind of concourse here, ticketing, um, so that there's activity on the street. And on the east block, it's the first of our office floors. And there are um, these larger floor plates below, and then you'll see as we go up, um, we get to uh, some of these smaller floors above. And then there's a, the, the, uh, what's called TD Garden Expansion. Um, this simply is um, the expansion of some of the existing functions of the garden where the concourses are tight, where there's not sufficient uh, back of house uh, for some of the operations of the garden. This gives them a little bit more footprint, about 30 feet of dimension. Um, just to expand some of the things that currently occur in the garden. And then as you get up, once you get above that podium level, which is um, three stories on the west side and, and six stories on the east side, this is the residential building, meaning apartments. Some split, unknown at this moment, um, still being studied of for sale and for rent. The hotel, which um, we have proposed the 200 guest rooms and then um, the office building. So think of these as three separate buildings. And this is what it looks like in terms of the street. Um, so this is Causeway. And you know the Strata building. And obviously you know the Zabra. Uh, and the O'Neill building here. This is the, uh, the building that Chris mentioned that is um, that Avalon is developing. Uh, on the, on the north side of uh, the O'Neill building and then West End Place. And so that's really the site right there. I mentioned this base, which is three stories. It may look like four in our drawing. But that's because the cinema is actually kind of two stories in terms of its height. So this is all uh, grocery below grade, retail on first and second floor, cinema on that third floor. And then on the east block, 
again, retail restaurants, and then office stores, four office stores. And that's the, the entrance into North Station, um, down to Orange Line and Green Line, uh, and up into Key Garden. And then the three buildings above, the residential building, the hotel building, uh, and the office building, uh, all with light and air around those building footprints. And so I'm going to take you around in our computer model and just give you views from, from different points. And obviously, in terms of the, the final materials of the building, in terms of what it actually looks like, we are in a very schematic process right now. Uh, but we do want to understand how we fit into the surrounding fabric of the city, how we fit into the skyline. So this is a view from the north end. Um, you know where you are um, on Fox Hill. Uh, looking back to uh, the site uh, and uh, the office building in the foreground, and you can barely see the hotel because it's between office and residential, and then the residential building beyond. Uh, How many stories? The well, let me. The total of on uh, the office site is, uh, I'm sorry, on the residential site is is 54, 55, 45. 45. I'm sorry, I got my answer backwards, 45, 600 feet tall, uh, 600 feet tall from here. Uh, the hotel, 200 keys, uh, this is 320 feet tall, and the uh, office building is 400. Why does the office building seem to have four towers? Uh, well, because we're try actually trying out, let me, let me show you one more drawing and I'll answer that question. Uh, well, two more drawings, give me one second and I'll get there. Uh, this is the view from the Tobin Bridge, and we wanted that kind of long view. Again, you can see uh, office, barely see hotel, and the residential room. And then here, this is the, the view I was looking for. This is from the Zeta. And so that's the hotel, and you ask, why does it feel like it's four, and maybe it feels like it's five? Um, what we're trying to do uh, is really kind of mark the entrance into the city. So that's a, that's a the, the individual floor plates here of the building yeah, is about 25,000 square feet. So what does that mean? That's about the size of a typical downtown, any of the financial district office buildings, maybe even a little bit smaller. But we're trying to, trying to break down the massing of the building in the building envelope uh, so that it's kind of an appropriate marker at the entrance of the city. It's, it's, um, it, it reads as five, five um, kind of blocks put together in order to create those kind of proportions. That's, that's what it's all about. It's really about the architecture of the building. But it's one building. Uh, and this is, the, this is the mechanical penthouse of the building. This is really the, the top of the building, the roof of the building. So this is the view from the Zaycom. You can see the garden, uh, the new um, uh, Converse headquarters building. Uh, that's under construction now uh, on, the, on the east side of the, uh, of the Zayton Bridge, and that's just where, where Portland Park is and where, the, where 93 dies down in the city. Any shadow study pictures? Uh, we, we have done shadows, and they're all available in the, in the uh, expanded PNF. Let me explain a little about shadows. Um, and let me come back. Uh, let me go back to the plan, and we, and we can we can show you all the all of the shadow studies. Um, I'm going to go back. Okay. So um, the good news about shadow studies is these are tall buildings, uh, and they cast shadows. Uh, but the good news about shadow studies is um, you can see our north arrow right there. That's that's north that way. So the sun's rising over here, and it goes along over the course of the day. About midday, it's right here. It's noon. And then it sets over here depending on the time of year. So <coughs> almost all of that shadow, and you'll see it in our diagrams, I won't say all, but much of that shadow is cast to the north. So it's cast over top of um, the, the garden and the rail lines. Um, and in, in, in the, when the sun is lower, December, it's, it's cast where, into existing shadows. So we can show you, we've done diagrams that show you the shadows at four times of the year. Um, let's see, Mar uh, March 21st, June 21st, September 21st, and December 21st. So four times of day, nine, noon, 
three and six. No sun at six o'clock in December. Not much sun in December. Uh, but uh, and you'll see by our shadow studies what's new shadow, meaning what's not in shadow today because of existing buildings uh, that's cast by the building. The only point I want to make is it's actually it, you'll, I was surprised. Uh, I think you'll be surprised. There's less shadow than you would expect from these buildings because there's existing shadow. And where it does fall, it largely falls on rail lines. It falls on the zebra. Uh, but we, all of that is available. Uh, OK, one, one more view, one more long view I wanted to show you. This is the view down um, Canal Street. And so existing buildings left and right on Canal Street, the double row of trees on the west side of the canal. And the entrance um, that we talked about, that I talked about, uh, Champions Row, uh, that goes into North Station and up into the garden. You can just see the, the garden beyond. Uh, this is the office building, hotel, and the residence. And then down at street level, uh, this is a view looking west on Causeway. Uh, you can see Causeway uh, all the way. This is the O'Neill Building and West End Place. <clears throat> These are the towers in the West End, the Longfellow Towers uh, in the West End. And what we're proposing here is um, the, the, a, a, build, a series of buildings, actually. Um, along Causeway, this is, that's, this is the entrance um, where we're showing an advertisement for the Barnum and Bailey Circus, uh, which would be a changing opportunity um, for changing display of fence in the garden. <clears throat> we're suggesting that the buildings as they come to the ground are masonry. I'm not exactly sure what we mean by that yet. Does that mean that they are brick? Does that mean that they're terracotta? But they are in the character of the Bullfinch Triangle. Uh, and the Bullfinch Triangle has, uh, has different materials in it. But we want these buildings to belong to the street. We want them to have the scale of the street, uh, to have these kind of openings and the infill of openings that's about the character of the whole uh, uh, Bullfinch Triangle, the whole, uh, <coughs> excuse me, North Station area. <coughs> and then the, these towers, the residential hotel and office kind of spring off of that base. And, and then there's active, thank you, and then there's very active uh, retail at the base. Um, and so that's a view down, uh, down uh, Causeway Street. We've had a few thoughts about, and these are all very preliminary thoughts, you folks probably know well. Oh, before I get there, i got to tell you, uh, because um, Kevin mentioned it, uh, uh, phasing. So what we've been showing you in all these renderings is what we call the full build. That's a total build out over time. But as Kevin mentioned, the first phase is really this podium that uh, I've been talking about, which is four stories on the Three stories, one more very large story, so the height of four stories on the west side, and six stories on the east side, and the hotel room. Uh, and then, oops, and then the, the, the full build out, the full build, uh, would be the addition of residential and the addition of. Excuse me, are all the towers glass? Well, the skin all glass? I mean, what happens at granite and brick? Well, the, all of that is possible. Brick, brick in, in these tall buildings is, is very hard to achieve. Well, okay, masonry or some other yeah. skin. And, the, and all of that's possible. These are, these are really conceptual drawings at an early stage of development. Yeah, and, and, I understand that. Yeah. And, and you'll, see, you'll see as they evolve, there'll probably more, be more diversity. I mean, so I see these alike. towers and I see all this glass and I think of Dallas and someplace like that, mm -hmm. not Boston. I mean, it's like... You get at the street level, you have brick or granite or whatever, which right. is more conducive to Boston. When you get to these glass towers, I know glass is cheaper to build with, but when the people are talking about shadows and reflections, I mean, we're, we're over here and we're seeing these glass towers. I mean, I, I would think that a better skin would. What? You can melt a car? Yeah, I melt a car. <laughs> That's just another problem with stuff like the city, yeah. Well, but, I, I, yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right. I, I'll, I'll make one correction. Glass isn't. Less expensive than brick. Brick is less expensive than glass. Uh, but, but to your point, uh, that there are these are two blocks. There are three buildings, and there's certainly the opportunity to do different things in right. different buildings. 
I mean, to put in three or four towers, I mean, when you talk about 500, 600 feet that are all glass, I mean, that's, that's a real distortion to this area, mm -hmm. in my opinion, anyway. I mean, we, we're familiar in Boston with glass towers. I mean, the John Hancock building was a disaster when they put that in the first. I mean, they fixed it now and it looks terrific, but I mean, to have those on the foot of the North End, I'm talking as a North End resident, yeah. that's a little drastic, in my opinion, but I mean, I know these are, these are preliminary, but I mean, if you think of skin on the building, I mean, uh, getting away from glass and more like brick or something like, you know, some of the other buildings in the high rises in Boston, like International Place or places like that, mm -hmm. I would think it's better than an all glass tower, but that's my opinion. No, no, that's, that's, that, that's why we're here. Uh, you mentioned the phased building, and uh, an analogy came to mind about uh, doing the big dig first going north, and then five years later going south. Now, that, that is an exaggeration, but the fact is that the disruptions of all the people who are living in the area is going to be much larger if you split the thing in half and try to do it at different times. And I, I can understand from an economic point of view or otherwise that I, you, you, you might want to do the split. But from an impact point of view, it really has an enormously different impact if you include all of the second level of uh, work that would have to be. Yeah, it's a, it's a very valid point. Um, what, what this phasing diagram does allow, though, is that all of the work below grade, which is clearly the most disruptive, all gets done early. And so then you're building above a, a podium, so it's a lot cleaner um, in terms of the, the, any disturbance. By the other but you make a very good point. It's, it's extending the, the construction schedule. Yes. Hi, I have a comment, but first a question. How high is the Zaytum Bridge? Um, I'm not sure I know the answer. But I think the top of the tower. 260, I believe. I'm sorry. 260. I was going to say 250. Steve says 260. Okay. My comment is this: here in the North End, we have a landmark, the Old North Church. I think it's 60 feet high, and no one's allowed to be built higher than that out of respect for that building and its importance in the neighborhood. The, the Zaycom Bridge, we now have a landmark, which many of us feel should be respected and allowed to breathe, not overwhelmed by these new buildings shortly after it goes up. I would suggest, I would prefer for all the buildings to be slightly lower than the Zaycom, if they go up at all. Yes. Yeah, we're talking about parking. Yes. Um, let me go back. And if you have noticed, there is a ramp that's right now under construction. Again, I'm on this is Causeway. Um, this is the site. And this is the access, uh, this is Legends Way that's accessed the, the uh, existing uh, service yard on the north side of the Garden. Um, there's a ramp that's under construction right now that will access that existing parking that Delaware North has um, uh, now controls. And if I go below, you will see that um, there's below grade parking in that existing uh, parking garage. I should have mentioned, by the way, uh, there's access directly from that below grade parking into the grocery store. We will build new parking uh, below this footprint and it will be accessed off of that same ramp and the total number of spaces 800 spaces for 800 spaces so 200 spaces per level <laughs> i'm sorry 800 spaces in the context of what of how many more people will be in in in, in, in north station because of these buildings versus how many parking spots so the total total density of the of the project is is uh, 1.87 uh, million square feet, close to 1.9 million square feet. So the parking ratio is consistent with the with the Boston Transportation uh, Department guidelines. 
um, and it would, it would serve all the different uses in the project, um, including the retail stores, um, the residences, uh, the office space, and, and the hotel. What are those guidelines? I just uh, in this area, it's it's. Um, Point four spaces per thousand square feet of commercial, and and uh, it's it's uh, point four parking spaces per residential unit. Yeah, it's uh, not and, and the um, as Harry's uh, telling me, there there are uh, we're replacing two hundred existing spaces that are used as accessory parking for the for the garden uh, that exist on the site. Uh, we think that with the expansion of the of the existing garage um, that uh, will create a pool of about 2,000 spaces uh, that can be managed. Uh, we have this situation at some of our other properties in the city, in particular at the, at the Prudential Center. We have all of these same sort of mix of uses there. We, we even get uh, parking traffic during Red Sox games, so it's a little bit of an analogy to the, to the um, special event demands there. And uh, we find that we can effectively, proactively manage um, the parking uh, to be an asset to all of the all of the uses and, and uh, every day. How many days a year does the garden hold events? Every day. How many days a year does the garden hold events? Uh, uh, there's approximately 220 to 230 events a year. Uh, probably 150 to 180 of those are sellout type events. Room Celtics and concerts. Just seems to see those those are times that garage is going to be full. Right. Can you go deeper? Uh, we're going so the the um, the new parking expansion will align with the levels of the existing garage, and um, so as I think David mentioned, there will be uh, four levels below the site um, aligned with the the levels of the existing garage. So it will go just as deep um, down, which would be down to the bedrock. Uh, will, will you keep the curb uh, entrance to the garage as well? Yes. Because you're, you're going to need yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it, it, it remains unchanged. Yeah. Right. And with the addition of the new ramp onto Causeway Street, the, the garage will actually operate more efficiently, and, right. and uh, that new entry and exit point will, will leave some alleviate some of the surface traffic as well will make it easier for cars to get <coughs> directly onto the, the highway network. You're adding uh, residents and office workers and hotel guests. Are you making any provision for open space? Um, there are opportunities uh, within the project for open space at the um, to serve those uh, the, People, the, those uses uh, on the roof of the podium buildings that uh, David described. Um, so we are planning for some some elevated green space to support them. I should also point out that the site, the property of the site, includes um, 15 feet of frontage all the way along Causeway Street. So the buildings are actually set back 15 feet from the property line to provide a a, a generously wide sidewalk all the way along the front of the site. Uh, you know, we think will be important for the, for the uses of this. Um, it's supposed to be two and a half acres of open space for a thousand residents. And that's not described. And what's that requirement? Two and a half acres for a thousand residents. Well, I'm, just, I'm not sure that uh, this particular site. There's that's in. You have residents. You have about thousand residents. Where are these people going to relax? So, uh, as I said, I, I think there are, we're designing some uh, ideas for open space within the project. And, uh, I think that that will be adequate to serve that. Uh, I I don't have the number. I'm, I'm probably less than two and a half acres. But if you're putting buildings on top of the podium, what's going to happen to the green? 
areas that are there proposed. The green spaces would be between the, the buildings. So the, the, the footprint of those towers, as David described, is much more narrow than the entire site. The entire site is, is two acres total, so just about. Uh, so that, that whole footprint would not be consumed by the footprint of the towers, which would be much narrower. Uh, I'll go back. Yeah, just, could you just clarify on the parking lot, what is going to be the total spaces? I didn't know if that was the new spaces. The, the new spaces are would be in the below grade garage would be 800 spaces yep. to replace the 200 surface parking spaces that yep. exist today, um, and it would expand the existing garage, which is 1,275 spaces. So the total in the expanded garage would be approximately 2,000. Thank you. Uh, I think the woman in the back had a question. Here is how are you able to get such height in this location when everything else around is 155 feet? How are you getting 600 feet? How are you zoned for that? Uh, the zoning of the site uh, is uh, 400 feet uh, is the maximum height limitation. So we would uh, require relief from the zoning in order to build the uh, building set we have presented to so you. you don't have that I, yet. Right. But we, we would need the approval as part of the um, this Article 80 process to, to build these buildings. Um, I, I would like to point out that the density of the buildings uh, is consistent with the, the overall proposal and, and a lot of the planning that we talked about at the beginning. Um, so the density and the uses are, are very consistent. Um, we have uh, proposed a, a taller building um, at this site uh, because uh, we're really focused on uh, doing a transit-oriented development here, putting density on, on this site because it has such great access to transportation and, and we believe the market is there. So the 600 this. feet of the residential, does that include the mechanical or is that in addition to? Um, I don't know where we measure. Because it's measured to the roof, not the top of the house. So it's another maybe 20 or 30 feet on top of that. Probably 20 feet. It's really high, that's good. Uh, um, it looks like you've got the commuters, the garden crowd, and the shoppers for the supermarket retail all entering the same entrance, is that right? And you're mm -hmm. shutting off the two side entrances? Mm -hmm. No. The side entrances would remain. Oh, okay. Uh, the new <laughs> entrance on Cosby would be in addition. Okay, so the commuters could conceivably avoid the big crowd. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We have a track of trailers though, and there's a rock concert. That <laughs> lot is, I don't know, 25 or 30 track of trailers that the concert. Where do they go? Uh, they'll be shipped off site. I mean, it's really been a convenience since the garage. Where will they go off site? Because they've been, for, for mo most of the time that the garden existed, they went to off site lots. No, they're there on was, site. Not, they're, they're there was the, not parking available until we tore the garden down. They're on Crossley Street now. Yeah. That so, lot, if, if, if some rock and roll band shows up with the entourage. They will, they'll come into the arena off load and they'll, they'll go to an off site location. Where? <laughs> not we want to hear you say, <laughs> not the North End. No, they're not, going, they're not going to go to the North End. They're not going to the <laughs> North End. Ma'am, where are you going? Ma'am, where are you going? With all this extra um, people coming into the garden, that means that the North End is going to be flooded with all this extra people looking for parking spots, even though you have parking. Um, to eat, yes, to eat and all of that. What are you going to do to help us alleviate that? Uh, well, in our neighborhood. Yeah, we we uh, again, you know, we have to analyze all all the impacts of this this particular development. You know, we hope uh, we see this as a really good thing because. Um, Although, you know, the garden events will continue. The garden has a certain capacity that's not going to change. So, you know, that, that sort of, what, the impacts that you see today will really, from the garden will be unchanged. And that, that happens relatively frequently. Yeah, um, I see this is going to be probably we, twice over. Right, so we expect that. It does look like a nice idea with the um, movie theater and all of that, but it's just going to bring so much more 
people into that area, so much more pressure. And we have to deal with that now. When I mean, we love the Bruins, we love the Celtics, but when there's a game, we're crushed <coughs> between everybody looking for a spot, between the partying that goes on before the game and after the game. We need some help from this organization to say that they're going to come in and they're going to do make sure whether you have to put on extra police, whether you have to do whatever you can to help us as residents of the North End to deal with such a big project that's going to go on. Maybe I can comment on that. My name is Brian I'm the regional manager for Boston Properties. But one of the things that the Jacobs family, uh, Chris's team, has really pushed as a major goal for the garden, we hear this from the Celtics as well, is that there's no place for these people to go because, let's face it, there's a parking lot there with a bad wire fence around it, and the people are forced to spill out on the edges of the property, and I would assume what you're saying is closer to, to, to your neighborhood. We want to create a gateway where these people are coming in, and it's a staging area, so that they're doing the things that they do before the game right in that location. And that there's a front door that makes sense, instead of the spill out that takes all over. What uh, I think David's team has done a great job of is saying, here is the front door, here's how you enter and come in. Because right now, it's, there's a little bit of chaos that his customers put up with, and you as fans put up with. The Celtics are besides themselves, and they're Chris's customer, they lease the garden from him. And the fan experience is just awful going in there. You're going up bad staircases and all these other th things, and there's several different ways in. They want it to be a logical way. I think that'll help a lot in terms of how the street works. The street, um, for those of you who want to see some of our most recent projects, um, Atlantic Wharf, the corner of Congress and the Greenway, Nebo's there, Trey, um, Smith and Walensky. We want to take everything that we learned from that project because it's really worked out well. And that is, to, if this project is successful, it's going to be successful at the street. We're going to have all the fanciest architecture in the world. Uh, somebody mentioned the John Hancock Tower. We own that building. and It's recognized for the great architecture. But quite frankly, it doesn't work really well on the street, in my opinion. Atlantic Wharf, when you go there, has a rhythm of the street that is the way it's supposed to be. And David mentioned that we want front doors on the street, but appropriately with, not some monster commercial building on the, on the front. We want to activate the street, which includes, <laughs> candidly, we want to get proactive, would be a good word, with our neighbors. The, um, the building next to us, the O'Neill Building and GSA, they're one of our clients in Washington, D.C., Government Service Administration, I think it's called. Um, quite frankly, we think it's just abysmal what that city street feels like in terms of there is no rhythm and our parking lot right now is a big missing tooth in that. And if we can do this right, as we will do, and we will execute this well, there's going to be a much better sense of order and I think hopefully not have the spill off that you're talking about because that is not the goal is to create havoc in your neighborhood. We want this to work really well for every customer coming in there because candidly, his sales depend on, if you have a bad fan experience there in terms of getting out, they let these guys know, and we want that to work much better than it's working today. But Not only on parking, but a pedestrian way. You don't have the density of what it meant to Atlantic Wharf is bigger than this project. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the streets are wider, not the uh, way it's here. We've got residential on the front of the project. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. not, I mean, there's no space to spill out there. It's not like it's here that it's right and, you know, there's people more time. Right. So it's, uh, I can see that you want to make the comparison, but it isn't really fair because that area there, it wasn't much of anything really before you did a beautiful job there. Oh, thank you. But, uh, you know, this is sort of more residential and more people can be in and out. There's certainly more residents than there were before, but especially in that right, right there neighborhood there, yeah. Uh, back. Yeah, you talk about the street. Uh, what are you going to do about the street right now, as it exists right now? It's a major choke point during any event. If you're working, coming home at night, or trying to get over the North Washington Street Bridge, that major intersection is tied up, ambulances and so on can't get through. You know, we're talking about that. That's going to bring more people there. What, what's going to happen to the street to make that more drivable? 
I mean, you, you're talking about trucks coming and entering off that street, and right? Parking lot. You're increasing the hazard, it seems to me, of the children. So, uh, the city does have a plan to rebuild Causeway Street. David mentioned it in his presentation. Um, that has uh, gone through a design um, and uh, funding process. It's it's ongoing. Um, the 25% plans were, were recently approved, and and we have met with and are working with the with the Boston Redevelopment Authority and the Boston Transportation Department to advance the plan uh, for Causeway Street. Um, it is a city controlled project, but we're working with the with the city to. Um, uh, enhance and improve and, and coordinate that with our with our project. So we anticipate with the construction of this that the street would be reconstructed as well at the same time. Now one of the things that we're going to be working with the city on is um, there is a master plan. But we want to get into this. Chris has lived it for 20 years and he's not frankly happy with how the sidewalks work in terms of connectivity. Right now because you don't have a front entrance, so let's say you're um, an office worker coming from downtown and you bring customers over for a Bruins game. You now, maybe you come down Canal Street, but you don't really think about going down Canal Street. You may go down another street. You're hitting from all these different angles. And there's no sense of order on a pedestrian way. And you see it when you're over there observing at game night. Like you said, there's pedestrians floating over here. There's jaywalking. There's all kinds of things going on that just cuts down or creates more congestion. We'd like to work proactively on that and bring more sense to the pedestrian part of this. Uh, I just yeah. ask one more question just about the traffic. Um, with that new with the new entrance and egress of the garage onto Causeway, where's that traffic gonna go as it hits that causeway? It's gonna come into down Causeway or what's the traffic flow study on that? So uh, I should point out, I, I think David mentioned it in his presentation there, this whole uh, network of streets has been uh, planned based on years of traffic study um, that was done in connection with, with the Big Dig, um, all with this project, this, this density we're showing you, actually more, th more than this density um, in mind. So um, uh, that, that was all planned out. The, the ramp, as I mentioned earlier, we do think will um, alleviate uh, some of the current congestion. It will allow cars heading that want to go south on 93 um, to cut across Causeway. Is it Beverly Street? Right. Down the Beverly Street extension uh, directly onto the highway. Um, and then cars going the other direction on, on 93 will, will um, continue to use the um, exit on the north side of toward, toward Nashville. So will there be a left turn onto Causeway coming out of that ramp in front of the Strata building? Uh, there will post event, uh, and which will be, and there will be police details there at that at that time. I don't know if there's a that, left. That signal, that stays signalized that intersection. So not event times. It, it, it'll just work in a normal cycle of the signal that's there. For an event time, you'll have to go straight across Beverly. Can't take a left. Uh, event post event, if you'll. Have, we'll have police details on Causeway at the top of Beverly, down at Duchard. So you, it'll be left turn only out, right turn down Beverly. We'd we'll be able to stay left in front of the Strata building because my concern, I manage the Strata building, and our lot there continually gets congested right now with garden traffic we, where residents came So you're talking, in. will you be able to continue on east yeah. on Causeway? Will we be forced down Beverly? According to our plan that we worked out with Captain Lee, is that officer that's at the top of Beverly will send people to the right turn down Beverly. Except when they win the Stanley Cup. There's extenuating circumstances. Yeah. For no traffic. You talk about the rhythms of the street. The rhythms of the space that we live in are North Church echoed by the Sacum Point, echoed by the Bunker Hill Monument. We can see the Bunker Hill Monument from many places in the North End. This is our space. It's meaningfully, meaningful historically and aesthetically. These buildings obscure the view of Bunker Hill. They dwarf the Zakum, and they show no sensitivity to the space of this area of the city.
Now you mentioned, I, I believe you mentioned, and someone mentioned, that you're looking for this project to be completely approved by the city and the state by the end of November. Is that correct? Um, that's correct with respect to the city. Um, the state process will, will go in parallel with that, as I mentioned, um, or with the, our next filing which is an environmental impact report where we are planning to seek a waiver for the first phase of the project, as we described in the presentation. Um, and the um, remainder of the project would be subject to a final environmental impact report that would happen um, in early 2014. And I assume one of the reasons you're looking for these fairly quick approvals is because we have a mayor now who supports this kind of development in that area. It isn't just this project. It's also nine other projects that are major projects in this area, one comparable to this at Government Center Garage. So never do we hear from any one developer what the cumulative impacts will be of all of these developments and all of the traffic that will be generated and all of the shadows that will be that will fall and all of the construction impacts that will occur with projects that are going to be built in the time frame of 2014 to 2020. All of those projects are going to be built in that time frame. One of the things I hope that the city is going to do is put out air quality monitors all throughout the Haymarket Air Station region and I want to be able to see at any time of day and night, real-time results of those, the data of those air quality models. And I can tell you, there's going to be a huge cloud over the entire Haymarket North yeah. Station area for, for several years. Uh, you mentioned master plan, that you have a master plan. Is that your master plan, or is that the city's master plan by which the city knows that the area can support this kind of development. If we don't know that our roadways can support the kind of development that you're proposing, the kind of development that HYM is proposing at Government Center, and the many other projects that be, are being proposed. I happen to love tall buildings. I think the streetscape definitely needs huge improvement. We've been waiting years and years for streetscape improvements along Causeway Street. Now we finally have this opportunity, and everybody wants to go up 400 feet, 600 feet. None of that was ever anticipated. I don't believe any of that was anticipated when some planning work was done, including the central artery planning work, and when they reconfigured the roadways. I hope I'm wrong. I hope your documents show that your project, at least, and hopefully all the other projects that are being built or proposed at this point, do fit into a plan that the city has determined that the roadway system, the subway cars, the, uh, the utilities in this area, the sidewalks you mentioned, I'm glad you're putting it 50 feet, 15 feet on one side. It better be 15 feet on the other side too because right now both sidewalks jam with pedestrians without this project. So just to that last one, uh, I think the city's plan does have a generous sidewalk on, on the other side. And, I believe and it's actually kind of it's just I a 20 the way total. The 15 feet is actually only our portion of the privately owned piece, right. but it goes 8 feet out from that. Right, so it's 20 foot sidewalks on either side. I, I was just talking about the 15 feet on our property. And I think your point about planning is a very good one. And, um, you know, I, I want to reiterate it. I mean, with, this project is, is consistent with some with some very exhaustive planning that, that was done that goes back a long time. And I think a lot of the other projects you're, you're seeing are, were also um, part of that planning. Maybe not all. I, I think you, you, you're right to point that out. Well, I've been but told planning there is this, no this. master plan. Because the ERA told me there is no master plan because they know how to develop. They don't need a master plan. But anyway, the, if, if this is going to work, if this size development is going to work, along with all the other developments, it necessitates that the capacity of Causeway Street is going to be increased greatly, that the capacity of Cambridge Street is going to be increased greatly. Cambridge Street is a mess. 
and on Washington Street at many hours of the day is a mess. How are we going to increase the capacity of those roadways? Is the capacity of the Charlestown Bridge going to be increased to accommodate these projects? Will it be repaired so that it doesn't collapse in the middle of these projects? And then I don't know what the alternative is going to be. And, I, and I'm not exaggerating when I say collapse. We, typic, we have a typical government reaction of not repairing things until they break, and then you can't even use them until construction is over. We, where I, I, I think the, the station capacity might be sufficient, I don't know, I'm hoping to find out in the documents. Haymarket certainly isn't. Haymarket station does not have the capacity for all the development that is proposed. Um, you talked about, and I want to know how many people, uh, when I review these documents, how many people are we generating here? I get your point, that you want to create venues that the people will be able to use, but you're not talking about creating venues for the existing crowds that go to North Station and, and uh, the Garden. You're talking about venues and buildings that are going to bring thousands more people into that area. And I'd love to see the numbers. We're talking 500 units of housing, I believe. You're talking about a humongous office building. A thousand, thousand units. Over a thousand, thousand units. Over a thousand. Okay, a thousand units. And 500 in this project. Not, not just yours, but right. all the other uh, Well, so just, just if you add this project and just the project right behind uh, the garden that's going to be under construction soon, you are talking about a thousand units just with those two projects. You're talking about a cinema alone. We see the crowds uh, down at uh, Tremont Street from the cinema, the low cinema that's down there. You need to add up all of the people that are going to be going in and out of this building together and then throw the garden events on top of that and then how many cars will be coming to that area i, I just think i think we're underestimating uh, the number of people the number of cars you have estimated i think in the peak in the uh, project notification no i'm sorry the environmental notification form that traffic on Causeway Street will double by this project alone. And yeah, I assume that means peak traffic will double. But we already know that the roadway can't take peak, peak traffic now. How can that possibly double? Uh, you mentioned shadows. I can't imagine how there would not be shadow impacts uh, when these buildings are so much higher than the buildings that are there now. And maybe they're not, they're certainly not shadows on the Greenway, we know that from this project because they're casting north. But are we concerned about the public space that's being created along the edges of the Chows River? Are we concerned about the Chows River itself and the dam? Are we concerned about shadow on the uh, public waterfront area that's being created at Lovejoy Wharf? The one time of day when I had an assurance of some sun, which would have been later in the day, on the public areas at Lovejoy, now are going to be cast in shadow by, potentially, by this project. Uh, open space was mentioned. There's this, there's this attitude that now that we have the Greenway, we can build everything without any additional open space, that we have more than adequate open space because we have the Greenway now. And that, I believe, is just really bad planning. So we're not creating any open space, really, public open space by this project. We're not creating any public open space by the government set garage project. We're not creating any open space. In fact, we're eating up open space with the Bullfinch Triangle projects. Um, and I mentioned the construction impacts already. We've got the so green line. I, I just can't imagine that all of these issues can be vetted, understood, resolved, and that the planning that's necessary to make sure that this area can accommodate all of these projects and the size of all these projects, that all of that can be done by the end of November to ensure that these projects are all approved before this mayor leaves office. You know, I, I just wonder, I can't hit all the things, especially the bridges and uh, some of the paving, but I do want to respond to a lot of the things you're bringing up have to do with just being you know, good conscious 
uh, thoughtfulness about the environment, sustainability. And um, all our projects are LEED certified. I'm on the Mayor's Green Ribbon Council and also part of this commission to understand how we can be more resilient as a city for climate change. So I will assure you we are very, very focused on this. On top of that, I have some additional incentive, and one is sitting next to me, it's my daughter, who lives about 150 feet from here. Now she's here to put pressure on me to get a grocery store, which I'm surprised hasn't been brought up. Uh, oh, I was, going to, I was going to bring that up then. Okay. Just wait. Uh, every project for the last 15 years, our hopes have gone sky high that there'd be a supermarket. We've we, we heard we, uh, those promises many times. Yeah. Well, we, I, I can said, tell we'll you. We'll be pushing, push shopping wagons. <laughs> the only, only foods, the uh, only food market in the sky before one <laughs> You'll be coming back, I bet you. You'll be coming back and saying, just like the last person who's here, just as you. We can't find, we can't. We've talked to every supermarket in America, and they don't want to. Well, I'm going to say. Okay. You don't have to build this new park in Washington. Put in something else. And they put in something else. I think it's CBS. Well, I We've had these we, promises we, a number of times. You'll be pushing that, that shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> only market in the south. Oh, only sir, only in the south. <laughs> we, we have not only the mayor has told me that we need to get a supermarket. Yeah, and he's told others, too. But I met with the ladies from the north end as well. For 12 years. Yeah, we are, for 12 years. We, and I am personally working on this in terms of the um, persuasion to grocery stores. We're working with four as we speak. There's never been a greater number that we have been focused on. We're going to get this done. We will get it done. And I am surrounded by pressure, rest assured, that I'm surrounded by pressure to get this done. Um, but getting back to the notion of sustainability and all those things, I assure you we'll be focused on that. There is no way that I would ever want to black cloud being surrounded in this neighborhood or any other neighborhood in the city of Boston. Um, there is so much that has to do with, um, if you're going to put these types of uses that you mentioned anywhere in the city, this would be the place to do it. You've got a transportation hub here. These activities are already taking place here. And one of the things that's a little bit tricky, so a lot of people are, are concerned that the uses that we would have there would take it out of the other bars in the neighborhood. So you've got different constituencies who still want all those activities. So it's a balance that we're going to have to be really, really thoughtful about. So uh, I want to reiterate something that David touched on, um, planning. So I, I looked around and the last comprehensive traffic study that I've found, or planning study, is something called Boston 2000, which was done during the Big Dig planning. I haven't seen one since, except in all of these different documents that all allude to it or refer to it. And each project, when I look at it, doesn't take into account what's coming next. So it, I think that that really needs to be looked at. I don't think that that study that was done in 1995 takes into account some of this. So just to reiterate something that David said. And then, you know, just the Crossroads project makes Causeway Street actually smaller. There's less lanes by the time we're done because we have to put in biking lanes. So that means the travel and the cars coming through that area are going to be a little more constrained than they are today. So it doesn't open it up for traffic flow. It's been being designed for something different. Yes, I can respond to that. Can I just say one more about the traffic study? That, that if you can look in the uh, filing with the VRA, all the future projects were taken into consideration. Uh, the VRA required that every other project that's in the planning stages was studied by our traffic consultants. Uh, and, and it's all in there. As far as shadows, there, there's no shadows to the north end. Uh, the shadows are to the, to the rear of the, of, uh, as David had said in his presentation. What is the, uh, the traffic, just to keep the traffic, what is the baseline upon which you're superimposing the traffic generated by this project. Is that baseline existing conditions? Does that baseline include the other nine projects that are on our map? Includes the other so that, if I read that report, I'll see the traffic is generated by all of those projects. Okay. 
And we would also um, make sure that, I've never seen this happen with all these proposed projects. And let me tell you, in three years I've been in this business, I've never seen this many projects that will ever happen. It just doesn't happen that way. I could be wrong, and from your point of view, you say to me probably, let's just assume they can do But I've never seen it happen. A lot of these are very speculative. We including yours? <laughs> Not ours. We're going to make this happen. It's, these have been too long. 20 years has been in the process of getting this done. And the, the time is now to get this kicked off, especially with what we've got going on in that retail podium. We've got to bring all these anchors together at one time, and it, it is tricky to get all these commitments at this at single moment. But we're going to make this happen. We would absolutely coordinate construction with any other projects that are in the neighborhood and make sure that we're making things move as smoothly as possible. But they're not moving smoothly today. That's our point. We've got problems today. Cambridge Street is a mess today. North Washington Street at times is a mess today. The Charlestown Bridge is a mess that causes a mess in Charlestown and a mess in our neighborhood. The, the gas lines are leaking like crazy along the Charlestown Bridge and at the giant chambers under the tennis courts, they've been leaking as long as I've been here 20, over 28 years, probably decades before that too, but none of these problems are being addressed. We, we, we're expected to take all this new development and all the money that's going to be generated for the developers, but also for the city, but why isn't that money apparently not, why is that money apparently not going into all of the infrastructure improvements that we need to support what you're proposing to build. I haven't seen any plan that would suggest that the money we're going to reap from all of these development projects will in fact go into building the infrastructure necessary to mitigate the impacts that we're very concerned about. Can I talk to that just on a microcosm basis? You made the comment about government running into the ground and then just letting it fall apart. So, on a couple things, the garage was in, in a very detrimental state when we took over it. Okay, it was owned by the MBTA, was owned, still is, we long term lease it. So, that garage, not only are we putting probably $15 million into the infrastructure of that garage, which isn't your neighborhood, I understand, but it's taxes that are now not, that's infrastructure dollars that the public sector does not have to invest in. We're investing in that. And with that, that garage came off, there was zero taxes on that garage for the 18 years that it existed there. It now pays real estate taxes. What the city does with those real estate taxes is up to the city and where they put the money in, whether it's gas lines or whatever. But on a very small microcosm basis, the garage is exactly what helps the situation that you're talking about. The development of Avalon Bay, that's an air right site that paid zero real estate taxes. It, they will now pay significant real estate taxes when that building gets done. I don't know the rate, but so there are, you know, the BRA, the city, will get that income. And I understand there's impacts to the neighborhood from this density, but you can leave it, you can leave it dormant, and we're going to be sitting there with no causeway street. I'm not saying market. anything no should standard. be dormant. I'm saying if we had a plan, but this this we development, know the sir, this development needs has to been be part. Of this development, at, with its density, has been part of a plan since 1988. And if you look at, you go back to 1988, look at the DPIR that was filed in 1990. This literally fit, actually fits into the plan with less density. There was supposed to be a million and a half of square feet of office space on this, on this site. We're not anywhere near that kind of density. So when the traffic studies were done, and I don't know where what traffic studies you were looking for, but in 2004, or excuse me, 2002, 2003, in that range, when they were looking at the street circulation, we paid for the traffic studies. We took into the account the 2020 density that was going to be on these sites. Our site, the building, the sites across the street, we worked with the artery and with the city to create the street grid of the one-way southbound Beverly and the northbound Haverhill, which there was no northbound Haverhill. 
So this, <laughs> all of these things, I can't control what's going on at Government Center Garage or Equities Project or what else is over there. But this particular site has been under scrutiny from a density standpoint and in the planning process since 1990. So, I just want to offer a different perspective. I've lived in this neighborhood for 31 years. And you know, you look at the area around North Station now, it's terrible. You look at this model, it's beautiful. This is a great addition. This is not in the North End. And I don't see any way in which that project would block anybody's view of the, the towers of the Zaken Bridge or the Bunker Hill Monument or the Old North Church. From the North End, that would have absolutely no visual impact, as far as I could see, on the, on the views. And it's taking a hideously ugly part of the city and turning it into something beautiful and useful and entertaining for all of us. And I think it's nothing but a, a good thing. I, I thank you all. Thank you. First of all, I would like to compliment David, who is one of our leaders at the North End. We live here. And I just want to bring you back very quickly to the big dig. Were any of you around here at that time? OK. Did you have problems? I know who that was. I noticed. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> good for you. Uh, by the way, we do have a good friend, except that he's on the other side of the table. <laughs> uh, for the moment. Yeah. Well, Chris, let me talk to you as a friend, OK? If you lived here in the center of the North End, and you have 24-hour construction, as they were proposing. Um, they being the big dig. The big dig, right. Let, let's go back a little bit, because that was a big project. Yours is going to be a big project, and the one right at Government Center is going to be a big We're going to be in another big dig central artery situation. Trucks, deliveries, roadways, shutdown. Noise, pollution of all kinds. All right. We formed a committee that finally brought the big dig to its knees. It took us three years, but we didn't leave. They were treating us like, I hope you're not treating this group here tonight. Oh yeah, we'll listen to them, let them air them out, you know, let them have their say, and then they'll go away, which had been the story in the past. That had been the story they're not done over many, many years. And therefore, they were never listened to for any length of time. We decided, yeah, you guys sit <laughs> I have a story to tell. And everyone in this room who lived through it, and poor Nicole, who helped us through many, many meetings with the mayor, we actually half lived up at City Hall during the years. Because a few of us took the time out of our lives and our families because we didn't want to be completely destroyed. And we were going to be. I'm only 50 feet away from where the major construction was on the cross street. Okay? So therefore, I had no choice unless I sold my house and I left. I was not going to do that. I love the North End. My friends are all here. So I decided we would set up a committee and we are going to fight. Nobody listened to us at the beginning. We were going away because some of our own uh, folks that work with the government, who lived in the north, said, don't worry about it, I'll just fight for a while. We didn't go away. We got the press on our side, and we were finally had a seat at the table. What I'm going to ask Chris, since I know you, come here, <laughs> uh, that we have a similar opportunity to sit with you at uh, several times during the year, during the project, Look at your plans and suggest maybe some better ways of doing it. Because we did that with the big digging. Would you believe it? We saved them $6 million on a portion of it because of what we suggested. Okay? So we're not dummies. We're common sense people. We don't have your background. We don't have your technical knowledge. But there's a lot of people that do behind it. I do. The only thing I had was a little bit of fire to start the process. OK. As we got through the 15 years of our disruption, 
We finally were able to stop them the 24 hours. They never started. They wanted 24 hour construction. We stopped some of their vehicles from coming down to the center of the North End and many other things. Uh, so, now, we're, my first question, where are you going to stage this? You're going to need a fabulous amount of space for your trucks, your deliveries, your ins and outs. Where are you going to get the space for this? Can I answer? Can I Quick. make a statement before we sure. answer the question? I think we will be we will be under much closer scrutiny. You say satisfactory construction management plan than the big dig probably ever was <laughs> as a private developer. I'm sure. I bet I believe the city and BPD will hold us significant, our feet significantly to the fire to make sure we're not running construction delivery vehicles through the North End and our commercial street and things like that. Well, that is true, Chris, because they, shall we say, learned a very I heavy lesson for the big day. We taught them. Okay, go on. And, I, and you're, you're, everything you just said is absolutely correct. You, you taught them a lesson, and I think they learned. And I mean, unfortunately, probably the state is the majority of the people that were involved in the city got it got a lesson too. I lived through the big day with, the, mm -hmm. with trying to operate a business, right. different situation, we're not yeah, trying to sleep at night, but we're trying to operate a business and we had to bring them to, them, to their knees to meet with them every week, you know, and we came up with solutions, you know, we, at one point we drove their, I don't know, some big pour they had mm -hmm. and they went down Legends Way and down around the, mm -hmm. down around under the bridge to try to be successful with the pour. I don't remember the circumstances, but so the logistical part of dealing with them was, was it, it took a lot of work and a lot of time and weekly meetings and all those kinds of things. Um, we're still here as a business operating, and so you know we don't we don't want this disruption from a business standpoint either, from this truck situation. Just in this again in a small fashion, we're building that ramp, and the city's been, you know very diligent about the traffic management structure Okay. Now you, you I, said... Do you think I could just, because I have to go to be in the BRA, I just want to kind of address some folks. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, I don't as long as I have the floor again. Okay. Uh, she, anyone else raise their hand, they get it cut off. She has the floor again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, very quickly, again, John Fitzgerald, the Boston Redevelopment Authority. Uh, obviously, you've been listening a lot tonight. Um, I, I'm glad I came to this meeting and I was made aware of it. Uh, just to make sure that I could hear some concerns from you all. As you know, there's still another public meeting that we're going to have for the greater, the BRA sponsored public meeting, if you will. I think we're having that on Wednesday at the BRA boardroom. So folks are welcome to come and that'll be open to all public, all communities. Um, but just to, you know, one of the things I heard a lot about is the planning. And now I'm not on the planning side, I'm on the economic development side, kind of the Article 80, but obviously very close with the planning agency. And we have a meeting Thursday. It's called the West End planning traffic and construction management meeting. I, I, from this, from even, I, I, I'm the project manager for the government center garage, the project manager for a lot of these things in this area now, so you all may see quite a lot of me. I hope you like me. Um, and so, we, we're really, um, where, I'm trying to think where, I am, where I'm at right now. Oh, I, I've been hearing a lot for a while now about, there's a lot coming on our plate, John. There's a lot coming to this area in terms of development right now. And that's absolutely right. And you know, I know you guys aren't dummies, like you said. We're not dummies, and we'd like to think that we're not either. And we know there's a lot of stuff, and I went right back when I heard that from the get-go earlier this summer. Hey, there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline for the West End, the North End, that area. And I, I, I got on the folks higher up, and I said, we gotta get together, we gotta start, we gotta address this, because you know what? I'm looking at the projects as they're coming to me, because I hold all these community meetings, and I'm like, this is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of, it's a lot of units. It's a lot of traffic, and so, we're in the process now of putting together a plan of making sure that we don't just approve everything and it goes through and then Lord knows, leave it to the next guy to take care of the impacts, you know? We are starting a planning process now that is going to look at the impacts of the construction management and the traffic that all these buildings will have. Because the buildings we believe in itself are beneficial, but we have to weigh the impacts on them and make sure that those impacts don't override what the benefits are of these buildings being built. So we're trying to walk that fair line. I apologize, I have to go. 
but I just hope for some folks it alleviates that kind of fear of the, the planning. I know I see some people laughing, shaking their heads. Oh, it's another BRA guy yeah. blowing oh, smoke. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it, it's guys. You just got to remember. I, I'm born and raised in this city too. I went, you know, went to Boston Latin, went to college here. I, I love this place, and I, I take pride in trying to do what I do and making this city better. And uh, I hope I can transfer that trust over to you all, for me personally, um, because. I, I'm not in this because it pays well, okay? It doesn't. Uh, I'm in here because I love the city of Boston too. I love every neighborhood, you know, growing up here in every neighborhood. So I just want to make sure you all know that. Just trying to gain your trust. I'm not trying to blow smoke. We are putting something together, and I made sure that we put this something together. So we'll try and counteract these impacts. When is it available? When is what available? What you're putting together. Oh, I, I, I mean, you know, before I, before anything is completed, that's for sure. By November, the comment period. You know what? To be honest, to be honest, I, I, I don't know. Uh, we, we have a meeting on Thursday. Well, then maybe you're not the right person to come to this meeting. Cairo Shannon. Cairo Shannon. Excuse me, David. Cairo Shannon. Is the chief planner, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're just beginning that process, folks. So when we have, I, I, I'm coming here, I, you know, I didn't have to be at this meeting. I'm coming here to tell you that this stuff is happening. I'm trying to inform you all. And, yeah. and I think that's, you know, what I'm doing. And it, it's going to happen. And of course, throughout this process, as it evolves, you all will be informed of its evolution. Will it be published as a report? I, I, folks, again, these are questions, again, I'm not on the planning side. These are questions that are a little bit, uh, one out of my pay scale, two out of my league. When will the report be published? I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going to come out of this meeting on Thursday. But I, of course, I'm going to bring back the concerns and the questions that you're asking me here tonight and say, hey, guys, I was just at a meeting in the North End on Monday. Here's what they're asking. You know, So I, I'm, I'm the, the conduit here. I, I will convey all these questions and messages. So please be nice to me, because I want to convey them all the way you say them to me. Why is the person who is in charge of planning or the person who is involved with planning come and Why did you do this This meeting wasn't about that planning study. So they were not. Well, this is a plan. No, so this is a planning session? We're here about the build. We're here about this project. This is here about the development. This is not the public meeting. This is the planning study. I'm just, this, this is the first break. This, I'm just telling you just now. I just got the, the invite to the meeting earlier this week. No one knows about this. Public knows right now. The meeting is this. Can, let's not get into semantics. I, a couple of days ago, this meeting was put together. So, I, you know, I'm going to work with when you guys trust. You're going to have to deal with me. So please, I hope so. And uh, I, I'm all, I'm, if you don't like what I'm saying, it's only because I'm being upfront and honest with you. And uh, that's what I plan to be throughout this process. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. We got the PR session. Okay. Again, to Chris, because I feel I've been talking to them. Maybe the other person. We have many concerns, the least of which are the noise and so forth, because we're not going to have the noise like before. And I'm assuming you're not going to work 24 hours a day, so there won't be any jackhammer or horn. What's the other one? Hope, uh, all around. Yeah. Oh, all around. All around. That, that's a beauty. beautiful. I never even knew what a whole Ramy was until I walked there at 3 o'clock in the morning at Haymarket and I saw what it was. Because if I hear noise, I'm not afraid of getting up and going up. I did that dozens of times. I don't want to do it again because I will hear I am on a direct line. I'm so lucky with my building. I was in a direct fall line with bent 19, which is right at Haymarket. Let's hope I'm not on any bent lines from yours. Okay, the point is this. I'm not here to squelch your beautiful design, which I think it is lovely. It's a little taller than I had expected. We'll talk about the height at another time, but it's beautiful. It certainly is going to beautify an outstation, the street, 
And by that, also the non -men. Because we won't be coming from a dirty area. Okay? And it will also spruce us up. Okay? So I'm there. I'm in your, your corner. But I want to show you this one. Have you, uh, should we say, investigated the underground utility lines that we have? We've had water lines break up. One just as early as about three months ago, in the middle of the night, flooded the street, flooded our cellars. Now, you know, you live in the north end, you know our buildings are old, you know our buildings all have cellars, and you know if there's a drop of water, we will get it in the cellar. Okay. Have you checked the gas lines? Have you checked the sewer lines? Can they handle the additional disposals of all the waste? Now, David, that's his job. He's an engineer with the state, and he is the chief engineer for the state for the underground lines. Your sewage lines, the water lines, the electricity, the gas lines. Have they been brought up to code? Have they been improved? If you're going to have how many more thousands of people here living? A thousand more people? Two thousand? Just five hundred. And then you will have another 500 or so people who work there, at least. It's a 1,000 of people in that area. They'll be using water, they'll be using gas, they'll be using everything. What proof do you have that those lines that have been there, God knows how long, and they only fix them when they break and there's a disaster, will be able to keep up with the additional pressure, and you at least tested several of the sites, and you know what is it, 100 feet from each other, or 200, <coughs> or every 50 feet. Have you tested the underground? Well, me with all of the utilities, okay. because we can't build the building without the capacity right, I understand. to be able to handle what you're But when you say you meet with them. What is it that they ask you or you ask them? Do you ask them, are they uh, serviceable for a thousand more people, for this much more work? Uh, how old are they? When did they replace the last water mains, the last gas mains? Yeah. Always are not replaced until they break. Now you have a commercial area, it's going to be much more commercial. Are they going to be able to handle the increase in demand, in use. You know, even steel wears down. A human being is not supposed to wear down. But we proved we did not wear down. So the thing is, we're not here to stop you. We're here to help you. As it turned out, the best thing the big did was when they accepted them as part of their team. And you said you met every week. Well, we met with them every single Tuesday night here or at the Mariner's House when we got a better place. And I can give you that better place. It's a beautiful location. It's got a board table. You can come with your designs like the big dude did. And we will sit across the table from you, talk with you, try to understand what you're trying to do. And there were times when we, as I said, we saved them six million dollars. Because there's some things you may not know about this area that we need. But since you're not building here, it's not that important to you. The only thing that's important to you is how it will affect us as, you know, under, under the underground as well as the surface transportation. We have a lot of people that we have, I think at the last count, that is going to be our eight year person. We have about 12,000 people that live in a quarter square mile. That's a lot of people in a quarter square mile. Okay? So this area takes a big beating. Now you're going to be adding to it just up the street. Yours is not going to be as bad as ours. Besides yours is new. So, I want to survive here. I don't want to have to move out. They wanted me to move out. They were paying me to move out. I didn't move out. Okay? 
I'm not going to move on. <laughs> but I want you to help. I want. <laughs> I want you. I got. I grew up here. I don't even history lesson. I don't want what. Don't listen to the history lesson. I wasn't well, here then, but I want to stand up. My hips hurt. Good. Enjoy yourself. Take a walk. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. No one's going to put me down, okay? Let's not get upset. You should give I've a lot of people a chance to talk. I know, right? John, I mean, you've been at it for like half an hour. So what? I haven't been on for half an hour. I was interrupted, if you remember. And if that's a problem with you, then maybe you want to walk up. No, I no, think, I'm here. If I might suggest, Mr. President, how about letting other people talk? If there are other the people, yeah. 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 I'm not sure that I've worked with these two different organizations. Uh -huh. They care about the neighborhood. They care about their neighborhood. Uh -huh. They're going to meet with you as often as is necessary. They're, gonna, they're not going to just go in the ground and, and, and pull their permits. They're going to meet with you long before it goes in the ground. And they'll meet as often as, far as necessary. Chris has been here how many years? Boston Properties has been, been in Boston for, for many, many years. They're, they're long-term holders of property. They're not going to sell this property. They're going to hold on to this property, and they, they will work with you. They will work with you through, through the construction management program. They will. They're sincere. They will work with you. And I'm sincere with you, too. I'm sincere in telling you I do want you to succeed. I want you to succeed. I want you to do it well. I want you to do it on the first cut. That's all I'm saying. Do it on the first cut. Don't you have to well, be doing There's somebody over here that would be nice Okay, we've got five more minutes. Anybody else have a question? Yeah, I've got a question. You've had your hand up a while. Um, I just have one question. Um, what percentage of the thousand residential units will be affordable housing? Uh, the, so the affordable question was about uh, the percentage of affordable units, and uh, it will be consistent with um, the city's uh, requirements on affordable. It's fifteen percent of the market rate. Fifteen percent, and it's five hundred. Five hundred. Yeah, five hundred total units. Five hundred. Yeah, five thousand. We only have a couple of minutes, but this question: Do you know when you're talking about the streets and commercial street, Crossway Street, so forth? Your stage is. The Charlestown Bridge, we call the high bridge, the visit low bridge, that bridge is ready to collapse. Now, you people are going to be constructing a fantastic complex over here. Your trucks are all going to come over that bridge. Boston saying the gravel, your steel, and everything. I don't think it can support that kind of traffic. And I don't see the city doing it. I mean, I've grown up here, and I've been driving over that bridge for years, and it hasn't been repaired in a long time. If anything happens to that bridge where they have to close it, this whole lockdown is going to go to hell because that's the only way in and out of here from the north. Hmm. You'd have to go down through I think there is a uh, weight limitation already on that bridge. Yeah, yeah. right. That's, that's why it's closed. That's, that's why the trucks, lanes are closed. That's why some lanes yeah, Those closed. trucks have to come uh, down on Senior O'Brien Highway back in through. Yeah, that's through what they that say road. about the gasoline trucks, but they still come over that bridge, too. Mm -hmm. you, know, you give a truck driver an option, and sometimes he'll just take a shot. We've expressed <laughs> concerns about the bridge because several of our trucks well, I mean, I, you know, you have a beautiful plan here, and that's your gateway from the north. Right. And, and unless the city jumps in and does something about that bridge, I'm not talking about the bridge. Right. Well, the there there is a plan, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure the timing of that. It's but, 2015. Uh, to start that? Yeah. I mean, some days you could stand at the Zakem Bridge on that station and watch the traffic tied up for 93 South Stark, yet the traffic is moving on the Charlestown Bridge. And if something happens to that bridge, we're dead on this side for a while. We have to go around and duck up this up for us and something. I'm sorry to say about that bridge. Uh, back on the um, affordable housing, will the affordable housing be on the site? Um, some of it would. Uh, there's potential that um, some would not, but it would. Um, but we would still meet that same 15% requirement. So what percentage would be off site? Uh, we would have to negotiate that with, um, with the city. Interesting. Thank you. Okay, we thank everybody for coming. Uh, we need to clear out by 9. Maybe on the way out, we'll get to the other